Hi, how you doing? Uh, today we're going to be looking at something to do with a water heater. Um, this is the water heater in my house. This is one of them. I've got two actually. And uh, what I'm going to show you how to do today is how to change the anode rod. So the anode rod is a uh, is a piece that's down inside the water heater that is used to protect the water heater tank from corrosion. And the way it works, without getting into the science of it, because I don't really understand the science of it completely, um, is the anode rod is a sacrificial material that corrodes so that the metal tank and the water heater doesn't corrode. So as I said, I got two water heaters in my house already, and I've already done this to one of them. So I've got the anode rod out of the old one, and uh, I'm going to show it to you, and you can see what I'm talking about. So uh, this, as you can see, is the... Uh, Look how corroded that thing is. It's got this white, you know, white powdery corrosion all over it. It's in terrible shape. So it's originally aluminum. Here's a new one. Here's an exact replacement. You can see um, what kind of shape that anode rod's in. So the idea here is that most people, uh, from research I've done on the internet, most people say to replace these about every five years. Uh, and it also depends on your water, um, water quantity, how corrosive your water is. So we've been in our house five years since we built it, and um, I thought it was time to do it. I got the anode rods from Amazon. What I actually did is I pulled out an anode rod first, measured it, then I ordered the replacements. Um, they were like $20 a piece. They were pretty cheap uh, from Amazon, and I got them in, and then I've done one water heater, and I'm going to do the other one now. So this is an easy job, um, but... Uh, still uh, takes a few steps uh, and there's always room for uh, catastrophe as usual so let's do it so my water heater is a whirlpool um, it's electric water heater but you know I don't think this matters whether it's electric gas brand or anything they all have anodes um, and this one uh, they were even uh, <laughs> nice enough to put this little sticker here to let you know although they didn't tell you which one of these ports it was in uh, I have figured that out already though um, and uh, it is this one, so it's just a little plastic cap that you pop off. Now I'm going to tell you another uh, another step here is that um, they insulate these things with some blown-in foam when they manufacture them. And uh, I had to dig all this out with a little screwdriver. That was not like that originally. It was just solid foam, and I had to dig it out. Um, and as I said, I've already had this one out once and put it back in, so... Um, there's the anode and there's where it's located on the water heater. It goes in the top and it's a long rod that goes in and goes all the way down toward the bottom. Okay, tools for this project. This is an important tool which you kind of have to have. Uh, the water heater uh, anode is in there. It's really tight. It's hard to get out. You can't really put a wrench on it and get it out. You need, it, you need a socket to get down into it. And you, the reason why you can't put a wrench on it and get it out is because the whole water heater is not mounted. It can just turn and it can mess up your pipes and stuff like that. So what this is is an, is an impact wrench. And this is a, uh, a deep socket that's one and one sixteenth inch. That's what size mine needed. I think that's pretty common. Um, then in here I rolled in my air compressor. Um, my hose isn't long enough to reach all the way from my workshop over here so I just rolled it in here. It's full of, uh, full of air. So this is how we're going to rip out that anode, and it's how we're going to seed in the new one, okay? So before we're going to get started, uh, the first thing we're going to do is turn the power off to the uh, water heater, okay? So this particular water heater has got one of these pull-out disconnects, okay? Uh, where you just pull this thing out, and uh, and then uh, and then power's off. Next, we're going to turn the water supply off. Um, we're in luck here because there's valves on both of them. It's going to make it real easy. Okay, so both the valves going into the water heater and out of the water heater are closed now. Uh, the water's off, but the water that's in the tank is still under pressure. Uh, it was at city water pressure before and I valved it off, but it's still at city water pressure. So I could go open a faucet, um, which will let off some of the pressure, but it won't actually drain the tank down any. Um, so what I think I'm going to do for this one is, uh, I'm just going to, this is a pressure relief valve right here, I'm just going to open that one and drain it into a bucket a little bit, just so I get some of the water out of there. 
Okay, I'm just gonna take this bucket here and um, kind of put that in there so that'll pick up the uh, water that comes out of there. Okay, um, the pressure relief valves have a handle on them, uh, so I'm just gonna pull up on this some. And let some water flow down into that bucket. Um, what I always do with one of these once I get it hooked up, uh, it's got a little switch here for forward and reverse. So I always hit it and make sure it's going in the right direction. Um, I'm just going to take this. You want to be careful and be sure this uh, socket is seated just right on there before you hit the trigger. pretty much as easy as that okay I just got some pliers because it's kind of down in this hole we got to get it out all right there we go. and there we have it okay now that we got the old now that we got the old one out um, here's the new one it's as simple you just drop it back in there just the way the old one came out Displaced a little bit of water going back in. And then I just twisted it a few turns with the pliers. Uh, just so I'm not hitting it with the impact wrench, you know. Without the threads being square. Okay, so as far as how tight to tighten it, um, that's a tough one. Um, I ran it in with the impact wrench until I saw the socket hardly moving anymore. It was still moving a little bit, but I didn't want to over tighten it. Um, so what I did is I tightened it down in there and I just got some rags. I cleaned up all the water that was around it and um, took a look at it, made sure I got it good and dry. And then uh, I'm going to turn the water on to see if it looks like it's leaking. So I do want to show you how I'm inspecting this. I'm using this. Uh, this is a little mirror, which is pretty handy, and flashlight, and really just uh, doing this right here. So you can, by doing this method, you can see in here great, because um, you really can't get your eye right up here to look straight down on it. So you just use this little mirror, and you can look in there, and you can see it uh, really good. Water's back on. Looks good for now. What I did on the last one was um, I did this and I left that little cap off and um, I left it open for like a week. And I came back down here a few times and, and I actually saw a little bit of water filling up in there. Um, uh, tightened it a little bit more, dried up the water, came back a few days later and it had quit. So it kind of quit on its own, I think, a little bit. Um, again, there's you're not supposed to use Teflon tape or a thread sealant on an anode. And I, I just found this out when I researched it. Uh, you can look online and learn all about anodes by people that know more about them than I do. Um, but the anode's supposed to be grounded to the uh, water heater tank for it to work properly. So, um, anyway, uh, I've turned the water on. Uh, all i got to do is hook the um, electricity back up, and uh, this one's going to be done.
Okay, thanks for watching my video on how to replace an anode and a water heater. I hope this helps you out, and uh, see you next time.